Uh, good morning. How's everybody? Good. Welcome. I'm John Ford. I think I know everybody in the audience, but I'm department head and professor in the Department of Communication. We're really glad to have you here for the second annual Mississippi State New Narrative Festival and Conference. And we added the part and conference this year because it's really a conference and a festival. I'm here to thank a few people and it's just kind of really get us started and introduce one of the co-founders of our event. So first of all, we want to thank our speakers, our presenters, our performers, including our two distinguished gentlemen who will be speaking in a few minutes, so we're glad that they're here. Uh, in addition to our speakers, presenters, we also have student performers this year, so we'll have some music this afternoon. And we also have some student showcases, and Dr. Holly Seitz and Dr. Philip Poe have worked on that. We appreciate them. And I know you'll enjoy Steve Azar in concert tonight in Mississippi Legend, as most of you know, was here and moved and came back and has chosen to stay here, which is one of the elements of our, of our whole festival. And we also have a pitch slam this year. This is a new event. Joe Lee will be here around lunchtime, and he will be heading that up. You'll have 90 seconds to pitch a book idea to four established publishers. So be thinking between now and 4 o'clock, if you haven't already, if you've always had an idea for a book. You can go in and say, here's what I'm thinking, and they'll say, great idea, or maybe not. And they'll tell you, and then you may get a book contract. You never know. Um, also, thanks to our vendors, our restaurants. We'll have a lot of them coming in later. We have many restaurants. I was telling Dr. Keenum and some other folks earlier, the restaurants in town have been so helpful, and people I didn't even know said, oh, yeah, we'll donate something for both days. So please enjoy the food today and tomorrow. And one thing I always try to do is please go eat at these places and Clark Beverage is always supportive and the Golden Triangle Brewers and the ones who support us, we always try to support as well. Uh, we thank our sponsors as well. And I really wanted to focus too today, we have Peggy and Jonathan, we're Peggy and Jonathan Gardner here, our presenting sponsors this year. And Peggy has been instrumental from the beginning starting this event on our advisory board. So we appreciate their help. And we do have signs, we also have it in the program and on the website, a list of all the sponsors, vendors, and others who've been supporting us. So, uh, also two interns, and I was just giving a bad time, I said, you're not gonna be in the room, but I guess I can talk about you anyway. And they're running the, mag the registration table. Eliza Heidelberg is our senior intern. Many of you met her last year. She came back for another year, which I was thankful and uh, didn't really beg, but I was so glad she came back. I've joked with her the last few days that your recommendation letter keeps getting better and better because, and my wife and sister-in-law and brother-in-law, we were going on a trip a week or so ago and I, we stopped to eat and I sent Eliza probably eight texts and emails and do this, put this on the website, change this, do that, and she did it all. And she's graduating in May and if anybody needs to hire someone, she's phenomenal, I would recommend her to anybody. Our other intern is Marisa Ladadio, and she's actually at the registration table now. She's a junior. I've already asked her if she would hopefully continue to be the intern because she's fantastic and one of the best students I've ever had. So we're really lucky to have two great interns. I also want to thank my wife, and she's wearing a name tag because her twin sister kind of looks like her, but Connie's the one in the maroon over here. Last year, she introduced herself at a meeting as John's third intern. And she's retired, which is great for me because, hey, Connie, will you help? And she's been tremendous help uh, with everything we've done. Our friends with public affairs have been so helpful with promotion. Megan's here with photography today. They've helped promote everything. They provided the T-shirts that you'll enjoy. And then the library, Jennifer Jones, the graphic artist, I have to thank her specifically. All our folks in the library have been very helpful. But Jennifer in particular, again, I told her a few days ago, won't you be glad when this is over? And she's, oh, I'm happy to help. But she designed all the graphics and did the posters and did the, the name cards and the save the date cards and the program. So we really, really appreciate all that they've done. Another one I want to thank, and he's in the back hiding out, Nathan Don. And I told him yesterday, I said, this is amazing what you do, but he, he, is, he and his staff have been so helpful and we appreciate what they've done. I always recommend people to have things at the mill. So Steve Solt is right here, the driver behind this event. And I'm going to introduce Steve, and he'll introduce Dane Dunstan, who's our MC, who's also been key with this. Steve, and, and he knows this is kind of my spiel about him, and he, this is approved by Steve Soltis, but Steve grew up in California, 
went to college in Texas and Virginia, most of his adult life has been in Atlanta, a small city that Steve always talks about. It's not growing that fast and no traffic and kind of like Startville, small town life. But Steve worked for 10 years with UPS in his last 11 before he retired in 2017. Those were with Coca-Cola. And Steve worked in executive communication, which means he worked directly with the CEOs. And I've told students, meet somebody who's worked with the CEO, they can probably help, oh, probably help you find a position somewhere, and internships and other things. And so how I got to know Steve is that he contacted the president's office about five years ago and Dr. Keenum's heard this story because Steve was so impressed with orientation that he contacted the president's office and said, if I can never help the university in any way, let me know. And so Kyle Stewart from the president's office emailed me, and when I called Kyle, he said, well, this guy is really impressive. I think you might want to get in touch with him. And so I called him. I went old school, and I just called him. And we hit it off on the phone. He got on our advisory board, and since that time, Steve has been one of the key members of our board. He's chaired so many things that we've done. Coca-Cola's been supportive, and he's gotten other people involved. He got Peggy involved on our board and some other folks on the advisory board. And how this idea came about, about three or four years ago, Steve said a couple of advisory board meetings. Now, there's so many things in Mississippi I'm not familiar with. I've just kind of fallen in love with the state. And when I mentioned that, they said, well, okay, yeah, let's, let's talk about it. And so for a couple of meetings, I kind of delayed he said, we need to do a new narrative festival. Okay, well, what do you mean? Well, there, we'll talk about all the great things in Mississippi and also the new ways we communicate. And so he said, I've got a, a friend in Austin, Dane Dunstan. We've done some things like this before. We'll get him involved. I said, well, that would be awesome. So we did that, and we tried this last year, and it went well. And so last year as we were finishing, we started talking about next year. And we're already talking about the potential for next year and beyond. So I am thrilled that you're here. And throughout the next couple of days, we'll have a lot of people coming in and going throughout the next couple of days. Please let us know any ideas you have, any suggestions, anything else you think that can make this better. And again, I'm going to turn it over to Steve, who's the driving force and our good friend, and I'm excited to introduce him. So Steve Saltis, come on up. Thank you. Am I going crazy? Did anybody hear a little... Birds chirping? Wow. Well, it's spring in Starkville. I love it. Yeah. Hopefully they'll, they'll stay up there. John, thank you. Uh, very kind, very kind introduction. Um, and I thank you for your, your entrepreneurship and leadership. Um, John's been wearing six hats over the course of the last uh, six months, including uh, a driving force behind what I think is... Uh, as great as our inaugural run was this time last year, I think we've, we've upped the ante this year, and I give a lot of credit to John and everybody on the steering committee for, for you know, getting us in a position to bring in such high-caliber speakers across uh, the, the broad spectrum of academia, government, uh, you know, the corporate side, uh, education, NGOs, uh, just, just phenomenal, social media. We're going to have such a rich discussion today. If you notice that the theme for the conference this year, uh, new voices, new frontiers in, in, during times of transformation. And I think everybody will agree that we live in a, a time of great disruption and transformation. And disruption isn't necessarily a negative thing. Um, it's, it's actually a neutral thing. It's how we charge that disruption. If we charge it in a positive way or a negative way. But when we talk about disruption, and I want you to keep that word in mind uh, over the course of the next two days as you, know, as, as, as you hear from all these different perspectives. But disruption is everything from business, business model disru disruptions, new competitive disruptions, new societal disruptions, new expectations from consumers, new expectations from corporate and organizational leaders. So there's all this disruption and, 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 it's, and it's also causing a huge disruption in the space that we live and breathe in every day as professional communicators. And it's really impacting the way that we show, tell and share stories, which is really the thesis and the genesis behind this concept of the new narrative festival here at Mississippi State University is to really examine some of the leading edge practices across the spectrum of business, government and civil society how it's impacting communication. And as John mentioned in the introduction to me, um, the state of Mississippi 
has traditionally been so over-indexed in its influence on setting the American storytelling narrative through the arts, through film, through literature, through, my gosh, music. I mean, this is the birthplace of, 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 of blues, the birthplace of, of, of rock and roll music. Uh, Mississippi's influence is not just nationally, it's internationally. You can't pick up a a rock and roll biography, whether it's Keith Richards or, you know, Fleetwood Mac or uh, the John Mayall's Blues Brothers. I mean, everything harkens back to, to the state of Mississippi and the influence of Mississippi music and culture have had on, on the psyche of the arts and communication. So we thought, what, what a better convener, a better curator to lead the, this discussion than Mississippi State University and this wonderful community of Starkville, which I've just seen in the last five years, really transform into one of the most vibrant uh, southern college towns uh, you know, in the nation, as far as I'm concerned. I'm also very blessed to spend two to three months a year as an executive in residence up in Charlottesville, Virginia, another beautiful um, uh, southern college town, if you will. And um, I'll tell you what, I've, I've talked to several people at the Darden School of Business where, where I teach leadership communications to MBAs about this concept and what we're doing down here. And the, uh, the positive feelings about what's going on in the state of Mississippi and, and specifically Mississippi State University is held in such high regard by so many colleagues uh, around the country and, and, and right there in Charlottesville. Um, and of course, everybody knows the connection with John Grisham, who spends his time between Charlottesville and Starkville and, and, and Oxford. And of course, he's a great ambassador for Mississippi and Virginia. And of course, Faulkner you know, spent time teaching at the University of Virginia. So there's this great connectivity, but it's just a long way of saying um, uh, what's being done here in this community through research, through, through science exploration, through literary exploration, through what John and, and, and the phenomenal uh, staff here are doing in the Department of Communication is being felt, is being noticed around the country. But all, the, all my peers uh, who, who've come here today and tomorrow um, believe in it. That's why, they're gonna, that's why they're here. They know about it. They know what's going on. They want to be part of it. So uh, most importantly, though, we're really proud that you all are here and helping us support. These are the early stages. We would love to see this really grow into something um, larger than ourselves. And I think um, it, we're, we're well on our way. Uh, especially when you look at look at our agenda over the next couple of days and the caliber of folks that are here. So we want to thank you all because you're every bit as much as pioneers for being here as we are in getting this thing launched. And we're going to have a, a wonderful two days of learning and fun and, and great Mississippi hospitality, great Southern hospitality as only Mississippi can do. So um, with that said, I would like to uh, introduce my partner in crime, co-founder of the New Narrative Festival, I joke that Dane and I uh, present a little bit of uh, international flavor. Uh, we're both foreigners. We're from the Republic of California uh, originally, so we bring a little international flair to our meeting today. But Dane um, is, is a fascinating gentleman. Um, he's one of the premier executive coaches in the country. He's a phenomenal speech writer, uh, a great creative director, and really a driving force behind setting our agenda and the tone and tonality of of what we're gonna be doing here for the next two days. Dane was also, I should mention, instrumental, very early stages of South by Southwest, which of course, you know, the South by Southwest Festival in Austin, we're by no means trying to emulate that here, um, but it is certainly a model that you know, we could build upon and, and, and look to for inspiration, and I think we actually have a, um, um, a, a, a tighter focus in many ways than even what they're doing in Austin. So Dane's gonna come up and sort of set the agenda a little bit and uh, sort of the expectation over the next couple of days. So without any further ado, my, our partner in crime, Dane, Mr. Dane Dunstan, thank you. Thank you, Dane. Make sure that this is on. I'm mute, there you go. I wanna thank uh, Mississippi for one thing among many. But that's the idea of a crossroads, and one in specific, it's Highway 61 and Highway 49. Uh, Steve Azar, who's going to be with us this evening, grew up at that crossroads. Uh, many of us who grew up in the 60s 
know about that crossroads, understand what it is. But while Mississippi gave us that idea in this century, it's an old idea. The idea of a crossroads is in every culture, in Africa, in Asia. The Greeks were very clear in what a crossroads was. It was a place where two worlds intersected, not just two roads, two worlds. You could go to the crossroads and the gods would materialize in human form and interact with you. Uh, uh, Oedipus went to the crossroads and met a stranger who he killed and later discovered was his father. Crossroads had been around for a long time because what crossroads are is the intersection of two worlds. Supernatural, usually in the mythology, but they don't have to be. They can also be the intersection between the road you've been on for way too long and the road less traveled that's causing you, calling you to move forward. Uh, Robert Johnson went to the crossroad and the legend is that he made a deal with the devil and out of that the blues and then jazz and then rock and roll was born and from that crossroads the entire world has been changed and I think most people in this room would agree it wasn't entirely the devil's work there was a lot of God in a lot of great music the world today is at a crossroads and just like every other crossroads there's a lot of people out there making deals with the devil in politics in society in institutions in business in relationships and so we need a new way to think about how we negotiate the crossroads in our world our biggest institutions every single one of them from government to our biggest businesses to our biggest universities and other social institutions every one of those could be abs obsolete in a decade universities could be obsolete hospitals could be obsolete. A lot of people right now are saying, hey, this government that we've spent 225 years building, who needs it? What do we need these institutions for? Let's just go without them. It's a conversation that we have to have. Right or wrong, things are going to change. What do we do? How do we navigate that change? That's what this conference is about. We need to think about a new narrative that comes with a new crossroads. It's a new narrative in how we work, how we show, tell, and share stories, how we talk about what's real and what isn't, how we survive in a world where people are telling us a lot of crazy stuff. And so what you gotta know to survive in this new narrative are three things. Number one is network. Everything's connected and everybody is connected. And if you don't understand that, you're going to really have trouble being one of the people or one of the institutions that survives. The other thing you have to understand is that it's all social. It's really about hooking people together. If you think it's just about money or if you think it's just about your quarterly returns, you're going to be in trouble. You're not going to survive. And the third thing is, you got to understand that all of this networked information narrative that we're in is just like the human mind. Like your mind and mine, it's filled with a lot of crazy voices telling you a lot of crazy stuff, and you've got to navigate your way through it. So what we're going to do today and tomorrow is look at those voices, separate the crazy ones from the smart ones, and find some ways where we're going to take a turn and find a new crossroads to go down. One industry and one part of the world that's really at a crossroads right now <coughs> is agriculture. We need to feed people. We may come to a time when we will have a decline in global population. When that happens, it may come from starvation. Until that happens, we've got to find a way to feed people. Because if we can't find a way to feed people, we're going to have some real problems. And climate change does not appear to be making that any easier. 
So food security and global agriculture are a real great place to start talking about this morning. And to talk about that, I'd like to invite one of the pioneers in that field, one of the lead thought leaders in this, president of the Mississippi State University, Dr. Mark Keenan.